Hi, Bookish Besties. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. And if you were already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, it is time to do my May TBR. Alright everybody, so it is now time to do the next round of the My Bad TBR game as well as do the standard challenge pulls. But before we do that, we have to determine how I did in the month of April. The very first challenge pull was actually a challenge prompt and that was to read a book set during the holiday that I don't celebrate. And I actually chose not to satisfy this prompt. I was having a very difficult time finding a book that I was legitimately interested in reading that was set during a holiday that I don't celebrate. So what I've gone ahead and decided to do is I'm going to use a king. And as y'all know, this is a get out of jail free card which means if I don't end up completing something for my TBR, I'm able to forego a punishment. Now, since this was just a challenge prompt, basically all this means is that I'm still allowed to satisfy the challenge prompt in the future. I don't have to permanently prevent myself from satisfying the challenge prompt. So that means at some point later this year, I can choose to satisfy the prompt if I manage to read a book that features a holiday that I don't celebrate. So we're gonna finally use another king. The next challenge pull was to actually read one of your recommendations and that was Small Things Like These by Claire Keegan, which I did read. Then I pulled another challenge prompt and that was to read a book set in a landlocked country and for this I read The Banker's Wife by Christina Alger because part of that book is set in Switzerland. Challenge poll number four was another challenge prompt and that was to read a book with the word secret in the title and for that I read The Housemaid's Secret by Frieda McFadden. And then challenge poll number five was another one of your recommendations and that was The Haunting of Blackwood House by Darcy Coates which I did read. Now moving on into the gameplay prompt the very first prompt that I landed on was to read a book with green on the cover and small things like these by Claire Keegan had an abundance of green on it so I went ahead and used used that book to satisfy that prompt and of course I did read that. Then the next prompt was to do a wormy pick and that just meant that I needed to get my family from the Sid Bookworms Patreon to choose my next read and they gave me a bunch of options to choose from and from that I selected Blacktop Wasteland by S.A. Cosby which I did read. Then I next landed on the prompt to read my most recent acquisition and for that I chose The Huntress by Kate Quinn and I did read that. And then the very final prompt that I landed on was to read a book that was giving me fall vibes and for that I selected Murder Road by Simone St. James which I did read. So ultimately for the most part it was a very, very successful TBR month. The only one that I didn't satisfy was to read a book that featured a holiday that I don't celebrate. But again, I'm going to allow myself to satisfy that at some point during the year if I want to. All right, and then you know the drill. Next, we're going to do the five challenge pulls. Last TBR was the very first time that I had filmed the TBR on my new camera and I was having problems with the focus. And I don't necessarily know if I've actually fixed that. I've tried, I've played around with it a little bit. So we're gonna see what I can do to at least make sure that you can see the slips of paper that I'm holding up. Let's go ahead and see with draw number one. This is still so so, so full. All right, so here we go. Number one. Hello Beautiful by Anne Napolitano. Oh, you know what? I didn't even realize that this was in here as one of y'all's recommendations. I actually read this because it was a book club pick for the book club that I run on Goodreads. And unfortunately, I didn't love this one, but I did read it. So I guess I ended up inadvertently satisfying one of the read like my subscribers challenges with this book. All right, let's try that again. I'm gonna quickly draw one here. The Storied Life of A.J. Fickery by Gabrielle Zevin. All right, this is another one of your recommendations. It was recommended by Whispers3661. I have heard a lot of amazing things about this story. I admit that I'm a little bit nervous going into it, not just because of the plot, but also because of my experience with Gabrielle Zevin and Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. So I'm very, very nervous about this one. It says, A.J. Fickery's life is not at all what he expected it to be. His wife has died, his bookstore is experiencing the worst sales in its history, and now his prized possession, a rare collection of Poe poems has been stolen. Slowly but surely, he is isolating himself from all the people of Alice Island. Even the books in his store have stopped holding pleasure for him. These days, AJ can only see them as a sign of a world that is changing too rapidly. And then a mysterious package appears at the bookstore. It's a small package, but large in weight. It's that unexpected arrival that gives AJ Fickery the opportunity to make his life over, the ability to see everything anew. As surprising as it is moving, the story of life of AJ Fickery is an unforgettable tale of transformation and second chances, an irresistible affirmation of why we read and why we love. I don't know this for sure, but I'm pretty sure the package that he receives is an infant. And I don't know if any of y'all ever saw saw this movie it featured Steve Martin and I think it was called something like A Simple Twist of Fate or something like that. And it's kind of a similar storyline where you have this gentleman who unexpectedly finds or is given essentially a child that he has to raise and it's all about how that changes his life. So this sounds very, very similar to that. And I loved that movie when I was younger. So I don't know what it is exactly about this synopsis that is turning me off, but I'm definitely a little bit nervous about it. And then, like I said, I'm a little bit nervous about it because of my past experience with Gabrielle Zevin, but I really, really want to try her again. I really, really do. So looks like I'm going to be reading this one for the month of May. All right, draw number two. 
The Good Part by Sophie Cousins. Okay, so this is another one of your recommendations. It was recommended by Nancy Picard 3456. So thank you so much, Nancy. I'm actually reading another one of your recommendations right now. I'm reading Ready Player One by Ernest Cline and I'm really, really loving it. That's a spoiler for my April reading roundup. Yes, so I actually read another book by Sophie Cousins. It was a book of the month selection and I enjoyed it, but it was nothing absolutely remarkable to me. If I remember correctly, I think this contains a speculative element. It follows a woman who wishes that she could redo some things and so she sent maybe back in time to to redo a year. I could be completely wrong about that, but I'm totally willing to give this a shot. Like I said, I didn't have anything against the book that I read by Sophie Cousins. It just wasn't anything mind blowing. It was ultimately pretty forgettable and I did unhaul the book that I read by her, but I would absolutely be willing to give her another shot. Okay, draw number three. And also I'm gonna say, I have no idea if you can read these slips of paper that I'm holding up because I can't see, so. Okay, so we have a challenge prompt and this is to read an academic thriller. So I'm thinking dark academia-esque and y'all know that I love a good dark academia. So I'm gonna have to think about this one because this is one of those prompts that I don't have anything pre-chosen for. So I'm gonna think about this one and assuming that I know what it is at the time that I'm editing, I will go ahead and pop it on the screen for you. All right, draw number four. A Court of Silver Flames. Oh my gosh. Oh no. Okay. I have no idea why, but I have been procrastinating hardcore on reading this book, but it is basically one of the last books that I need to read of Sarah J. Mass's in order to be completely caught up with her. And I absolutely need to read this one before I can move on into House of Flame and Shadow. So I'm actually currently already in the middle of an immersion read. I'm reading Swordcatcher by Cassandra Clare. So that's currently the thick chunky fantasy that I'm reading for the time being, but I guess this is going to be my next immersion read. It looks like I'm finally getting A Court of Silver Flames off of my TBR and I am nervous about it. Even though I've heard so many great things about this and I know that I'm going to love it. I don't know. There's just something that's been putting me off about reading it. You know what? We're going to see. We're going to do it. We're going to read A Court of Silver Flames. So this should be the fifth and final draw. Okay. The Authenticity Project. Okay, hold on. I think I might have this book candy. Okay, so this is a contemporary story that I actually purchased a while ago. I can't remember what inspired me to purchase it, but I heard good things about it and I really enjoyed the synopsis of this. So let's see. It says, Julian Jessup, an eccentric, lonely artist, believes that most people aren't really honest with one another. But what if they were? And so he writes in a plain green journal the truth about his own life and leaves it in his local cafe. It's run by the tidy and efficient Monica, who furtively adds her own entry and leaves the book in the coffee bar across the street. Before long, others who discover the green Notebook, add the truths about their own deepest selves and soon find each other in real life at Monica's cafe. By turns quirky and funny, heartbreaking and true to life, The Authenticity Project is a story about being brave and putting your real self forward and finding out that it's not as scary as it seems. In fact, it looks a lot like happiness. So this just sounds like it's going to be a very cute, sweet, heartwarming contemporary and there was just something about the vibes of it and the synopsis of it that I really, really enjoyed. So we're gonna go ahead and give this one a shot in May. All right, y'all, those were some very, very interesting selections, but I'm actually quite happy with them because first of all, I have a couple of your recommendations. I'm trying to do at least on average two of those a month. We also have some books that are already on my physical TBR like The Authenticity Project and A Court of Silver Flames and then of course A Court of Silver Flames will make progress in some series. So I'm really happy about that. I'm really happy to be making a dent in my physical TBR and the series that I'm already a part of. So now let's go ahead and get into the gameplay. All right everybody welcome to the next round of the My Bad TBR game. The board should be exactly as it was when I left off after the last month of gameplay. We are going to stick with the standard six draws unless the board is unkind to me and as per usual we are going to start with draw number one. It looks like the board decided to start being cheeky very early because anytime I draw a two I have to add a draw so we are already up to seven draws for this round. Let's go ahead and see what color I will be moving. All right, well that actually could not have worked out better because I currently only have one pawn in start and it is a yellow. And now that guy has an opportunity to get out of start. So let me turn the board around and we will free him from start. Okay, so he is going to move out from start onto this free space and no book needs to be selected. All right, so my very first draw was the number two and the color yellow. And yellow was actually the only pawn that I had left remaining in start. So I was able to take that pawn and move it out of start onto the free space. And so of course, no book is selected from that one, but I did have to go ahead and add another draw to the gameplay. Draw number two. Oh no, we've got a joker. And for my TBR game, this is essentially the equivalent of a sorry. So essentially, if I draw a joker, one of my pawns gets put back into start and I have to do the punishment prompt. In this instance, it's to read the lowest rated book on my TBR. So let me go ahead and draw and see what color is being sent back to start. So red is going back to start. So let me go ahead and flip the board and we will put red back into start. 
All right, then next I drew a Joker. And for those of you who are not familiar, Jokers are essentially the equivalent of sorry in the original board game. And so what happens here is that one of those pawns gets booted back to start and that pawn has to remain in start for the remainder of this month of gameplay. Unless of course I draw a card like a one or a two that will allow it to get out of start. Now drawing a Joker actually supersedes the rule that I have of allowing myself to always have one pawn of each color actively out on the playing field at any time. I made that rule in order to ensure that I could continue gameplay that there was never really going to be a stall in gameplay, but I thought it would be too easy and kind of negate the point of a joker if I put a pawn in start and then it was immediately able to get back out on the playing field just because it was the only color that I had actively out on the playing field, if that makes sense. So in this instance, I drew the red. I only had one active red out on the playing field. Red got booted back to start. And so for this month of gameplay, that red has to remain in start unless of course I get a card that allows it to move out. And then of course, if it doesn't get out of start and I make a draw in the color red and I can't move my red, I have to take a punishment. But as you saw on the card for the Joker, I have to read the lowest rated book on my TBR. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up Goodreads and sort by average rating. And we're going to see what the lowest rated book on that TBR is. All right. So I'm here on my Goodreads. I'm going to go to want to read, pull it up and sort it on my phone by average rating. Okay, so the lowest rated book on my TBR currently is I Did It For You by Amy Engel. And I'm actually kind of really upset by that because I have really enjoyed Amy Engel's two other releases, but this is going to work because it's actually going to satisfy another challenge prompt and that's to read a book with less than 2024 ratings on it. So I'm happy to be getting to this, but I'm a little bit nervous because of how low it's rated. It says it's been 14 years since Greer Dunning's older sister Eliza was murdered and Greer's family has never been the same. And now there's been a similar killing in Greer's small Kansas hometown, Lolo, after the execution of the convicted killer. A copycat according to the authorities, but Greer is convinced that there is more to the story. That Eliza's murderer had help all those years ago. So Greer returns to Ludlow after more than a decade away. Okay, we have that reluctant return home and of course it's a standard 10 years. I feel like in all of these books you have to be away for 10 years before you can return home. It's always a decade. Anyway, she returns home desperate to find answers to the questions that have haunted her for years and her drive to uncover the truth pushes her to form a bond with the unlikeliest of allies. At once a riveting mystery and a deep exploration of guilt, loss, and the ways in which a violent murder transforms both the family of the victim and the family of the killer, I did it for you will keep readers captivated through the very last page. Like I said, I've really enjoyed Amy Engel in the past and I'm hoping to enjoy this one as well. All right, draw number three. All right, well, the game board certainly has got jokes because like I just mentioned, I have made a draw and the color red and I cannot move my red pawn. And so because I cannot move my red pawn, I'm going to have to take a punishment. I do have a cup full of punishment prompts, so I will draw that live on camera and we will figure out what I'm going to do for that one. All right, draw number three was a number six, but I drew the color red. And as I just mentioned, I'm not able to move red at this point because all of the other pawns are in home base and red is stuck in start. So I have to take a punishment. And for this, I actually have a punishment wheel. I'm going to pull it up. We're going to spin the wheel and we're going to see what my punishment prompt is. All right, we're going to go ahead and spin. A book by an author that I previously disliked. So maybe I've read a book by an author that really didn't work for me and I've kind of vowed not to read anything more from that author going forward. So there are definitely going to be quite a few examples of this, but I'm going to have to think about it. I'm going to have to think of an author that I really haven't enjoyed in the past and think of a book that I might want to read from them now. This is another one that I will go ahead and pop up during editing when I know what I'm actually reading. Draw number four. I'm a little bit scared now because the board is definitely not being nice to me. All right, well, this game board 100% does not like me because again, I cannot move my red, so that is another punishment. All right, and then I drew a seven and again, the color red. So again, we're going to have to spin the punishment wheel, y'all. All right, let's see what the wheel has in store for me this time. a book I said I'd never read. And I actually have the perfect option for this because this is not only going to satisfy a punishment prompt, it's going to be an academic thriller. So it's going to satisfy that reading challenge prompt that I pulled earlier. And not only that, but it's one of y'all's recommendations, a book that's been pushed on me quite heavily by none other than Miss Jillian, a member of my chaos squad. So Jillian, this is dedicated to you. I think in the month of May, I'm going to be reading Bunny by Mona Awad. And I cannot tell you how upset I am by that. <laughs> 
I have heard that this is a book that you either love or hate because it is an incredibly weird book. I hate weird stories. I hate stories that do not make sense to me. I'm going to give it a shot. I cannot say that I'm going to finish it. I may DNF it, but we're going to go ahead and give Bunny by Mona Awad a shot and I'm scared. <laughs> All right, draw number five. All right, finally, I can move a pawn. So let me go ahead and flip the board. It looks like the blue is very close to getting into his home base. So let's see what this does. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh my gosh, y'all, we did it. We finally got all of one color into home base. So that means blue essentially wins. Blue is safe for the entirety of the rest of the gameplay and we're no longer going to be moving pawns. So we are one step closer to finishing this round of gameplay. And of course, no book is going to be chosen for this one. All right, then I drew the number eight and the color blue and we finally had a positive draw y'all because not only was I finally able to move a pawn but but this actually got my final blue pawn into its home base and so that means blue is done with this round of gameplay blue does not have to move ever again so it's the first color that got all four pawns into home base and I'm absolutely ecstatic about it so now we only have the other three colors to go and we are very slowly making our way towards the end of this round of gameplay and of course no book is chosen for this all right draw number six All right, yellow. So I have two active yellow pawns out on the playing field. Which one I move is going to probably be determined by the prompt. So let me flip the board really quick and we will determine what I move. Okay, so this one over here is probably gonna be hard to see, but this is one, two, three. That is a new to me author. And then one, two, three is romance or contemporary. Ooh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do one, two, three, new to me author. All right, then I drew the number three in the color yellow and I landed on the prompt to read a new to me author. So I don't think I'm going to actually select anything right this minute. And the reason I say that is because I want to see what the book of the month selections are before I select everything because a lot of the times there's typically at least one book by an author that I haven't read before that I'm interested in and I want to read. But just in case that doesn't happen or just in case I'm not able to easily access the audiobook for any of the book of the month selections, I'm going to go ahead and use the Authenticity Project by Claire Pooley to satisfy this because Claire Pooley is a new to me author. I've never read anything by her before. So we're going to go ahead and use this one. All right. So if I've counted correctly, this should be our seventh and final draw again unless the board decides to be very unkind to me, which it seems like it wants to do this time. I have to take another punishment, but thankfully that is it. That ends this round of gameplay, which is lovely because I'm totally scared to draw anything more. So let's go ahead and see what punishments I end up getting. All right, and then of course we could not end this game on a positive note. I drew a 10 and the color red again. So as you know, that means I have to do another punishment. So let's go ahead and spin the wheel. Okay, so this is actually a fun one. Subscribers least favorite. This is where I need your help. I need you in the comments down below to let me know some of your least favorite books that you have read so far this year. And then I will go ahead and select one of them. So I'm actually excited this one came up because I really wanna know some of your least favorite books of the year. So please leave all of those answers down below for me. All right, y'all, thank God that is over. That is it. This is definitely the most intimidating and chaotic TBR that I have made to date. I need y'all to keep me in your thoughts and prayers during the month of May because I have not not sure how this is going to go. All right, y'all, that is it. We're done. We're not doing any more today. Please comment down below again your least favorite books of the year so far or what you think of the TBR that I will be reading in May. I would love your thoughts. Or if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me a bunny emoji in honor of bunny by Mona A. Wad. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I typically post two videos a week, one on Wednesdays, one on Sundays, and I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which you can always find linked down below along with any books that I may talk about in a video. Until next time y'all, bye.